Chris and Mike at night. Movie and edition, talking movies, but also talking everything else yeah. uh, that's going on. We are in the first month of uh, 2023, and it's been off to a great start. This was an unexpected uh, show that I didn't see coming. Yeah, it's yeah. been a lot of fun, and uh, it's been a blast. How's your 2023 going so this far? This is by far the most pleasurable recession I, I think I've been through. <laughs> <laughs> As My recessions butt. go, <laughs> you know what? It's not a real recession because I still get, uh, I don't know what your situation is, okay. but I get pinged on Indeed all yeah. the time for jobs I'm not remotely quali qualified non -stop. for. It's nonstop. And I'm like, I literally email the people back going, you don't want me you for really this job. You really don't. I looked the part for a lot of things, but as far as actually being qualified, nope. you know what? If I'm being all the way honest, like I know what a recession is if I had to like give you the definition Google Google would give me, but do I really know like what it is? Um, there was this old expression that uh, Ronald Reagan used to have. It was a recession is when uh, your friends or your neighbors are out of work. A depression is when you're out of work. <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good one. It is really good. Sense, Reagan right? was good. He was good with language. That's why so many people remember him so well and so fine. Yeah. And he had the nice hair. Fair but, enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, all right. So believe it or not, we're almost through. January, for those of you that don't live in Chicago that are watching the show from out of town, uh, January is a tough one to make it through in this city. But I have a theory. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm listening. <clears throat> Whoever designed uh, football and the NFL and football as part of the entertainment mega complex was yeah. a genius. Because I firmly believe that when you start off the year, it can be so depressing with weather and all that stuff yeah, yeah. That, that the only thing to get you through it can be the NFL playoffs. It's it can like, be. Oh, New Year's, it's depressing. I don't have anything going on. Oh, wait, Chiefs and Bengals. Right. You know, it's like a drug, but it's a safe drug. And here's how genius it really is, is that even though right now, so I'm going to be honest, nobody's going to believe me, but my team has been the 49ers forever since I'm, since I'm like eight well, years old. Well, but, but even if your team is Chicago Bears and they are just horrendous, you get the draft pick. You get the draft pick. Like you're drawn yeah. in no matter what. And there's, and to your point, along the same lines, there's really no off season. It's never out of there's mind really because the, all the Bears trade have, rumors. yeah, trade rumors, mock drafts. Here's what this guy thinks the Bears are going to mm. do. Here's what that guy thinks the Bears. They're yeah, going to yeah. trade the pick. They're going to draft this guy. Nonstop from now in the off season. April. There's no off season. The NFL planted a bug in your oh, brain yeah, yeah, yeah. that's not leaving. Did not know you were a 49ers guy. I love him. All right. But since like Tom Rathman, Keena Turner, the back in the day stuff. Here's my Ken thing. Ken Norton Jr. Ken Norton Jr. That yeah. was a tough pick. I do. You're not even old enough to remember. Ken Norton Sr. Probably was a not. boxer who fought Ali. Oh, Ken Norton, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, him. Yeah. Wow. You know what? That makes a whole lot of sense. I'll tell you what doesn't make sense is how John Madden had an entire career just telling you exactly what it is that you just seen and already know. He was... Quarterback uh, drops back, he throws a football, you catch the football in the end zone, boom, that's boom, a touchdown. Boom, he just, <laughs> add, he just added sound to it. He just took a, like, uh, <laughs> if a quarterback grabbed back, hit the tight end for 15 yards over the middle, and Madden went... <laughs> Remember what this guy's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and had an entire career. His legacy lives on through video games for for forever. forever. Perpetuity, he, that guy. You know what he did? He took a concept, and it sounds simple, mm. but he took a concept and he made it fun. He did what Harry Carey did. I don't know if you're even old enough to remember yeah, yeah. him. Dick Vitale. They just made it fun. You're enjoying, you're watching the game at home. You're sitting there, you're watching it. And the guy in the booth wants to have a good time. And you just say a no. You make a noise with your mouth, and everybody. Oh, so baby! And these guys are gazillionaires uh, because they just took a simple concept and said this should be fun and shouldn't be. Mm. You know, you're sitting home watching a college basketball game after a hard day at work. Mm. And that should be fun. You sit down watching a Super Bowl on Sunday. That should be fun. Let's you know. Otherwise. Yeah. Without those guys, there was always just the serious announcer. And first and oh, ten for the Cowboys at the 41-yard line. Yeah, Gotta have, a, what is it, color commentary? There you go. Gotta have the color guy. They put the color in the color they commentary. Put, they put the color guy. I'm put not touching it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> You'd be a good color commentator. <laughs> it's 2023, Chris. I know. <laughs> I don't care. Where did these great come from? I don't know. Um, wouldn't you have fun with it, though? I think I would. I think I would until how can you not be biased? How can you not just gamble ridiculously? All right. I'm glad you brought that up because that's where this is all headed anyway. And once you open up that little gateway or that little little loophole, people are going to, I mean, anytime you can do it from your phone. It's right there. It's right there. It's right there. How can you not? How can you not? gamble and I'm surprised I I don't know what the numbers are but the numbers that state of Illinois brought in with legalized sports gambling third to New Jersey which has the highest I think in the the, obviously the big sports markets Mm. bring in a lot of money Jersey Illinois I don't know where California is on that Michigan's a great uh, all the places you're not allowed to gamble at now you're allowed to gamble and you just look the other way it's the brown paper bag Around your 40 ounce beer. No, of you're gambling. right. No, you're right. And here's the thing I'd be curious to hear your point of view on this. Mm-hmm. People would be doing it anyway. So if you're. If, if, you're going to gamble on something. You're going to gamble. If people are going to do it, shouldn't the government sanction it, lay the rules, lay the groundwork, and collect the tax revenue for it? If that's what's going to happen, if that's going to save schools, if that's going to build bridges, if that's going to make our city better Here's somehow. just the thing, though, Chris. Paying your taxes is a gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think all that money is going? <laughs> I hit a pothole that was the size of a Special Olympic swimming pool. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and destroyed my tire last oh, week. And a couple of the, I got here on, I got here on, a, um, I'm not even playing. I got here on a, uh, uh, on an Uber ride. I just blew up my tire oh. on Lakeshore Drive. Oh, it's not like God. one of my, my south side residential neighborhood roads. That was this the is, side of the city they is, take care of. This is, it was on the other side of, of downtown. It was past Roosevelt. You think they're looking out for the north side? No. 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 So, you, th- I mean, I don't know. Like, you think all that tax incentive money is going to it's wherever, the wherever, The laws whatever? are written. It's supposed to. But I as you're mean, right, you on. have found a loophole or a pothole, oh. as it were. <laughs> hey, let's talk another sport. You brought this yes. up before the show, and I was kind of curious. I have not caught on to it, but I yeah. know how popular it's getting. I could say that about NASCAR, yeah, too, yeah. but I'm not going to go that route. But um, Fair enough. Uh, UFC, tell me about that, what that means, and how you get connected to a certain type of wrestler, or a, or a fighter or a wrestler. Uh, it's, it's soap operas with fighting at the end, right? Because if you watch... If you watch anything, you're watching it for the story, mainly, right? Like a Conor McGregor, like he has a story. That's a fantastic story. You watch somebody, just a self-belief, determination, okay. bravado. Got it. And here's the thing, is that most things that you watch, you watch somebody do that, and you're like, ah, that guy's faking it, or that's not really that guy's personality, or, or maybe, you know, he's, he's just doing this for the cameras. These guys are fighting at the end. Okay. And could die. <laughs> so this is really death match. Okay. This is really who they—they they literally have to back up all that stuff they talk. And if they take it on the chin, you still give them respect over that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a matter. And of, you, yeah. um, you, you definitely find out. You find out what people are made of. Because I mean, how old is every sport, and how old is fighting? I think fighting dates way back to the 1800s. Has to be. Has to be. But it before has to date that, back to but, 1990, always. But like, couldn't you? Place it back to ancient Roman times with gladiators. You have to place it back to as long as there was, if, if there's man, woman, and then another man. <laughs> Hello, fighting. <laughs> That's when it dates back to. Got it. And there was a lot of that, apparently. Of with course. Band, they couldn't work it out. Now, as far as prize fighting goes, that, that's whatever. But no, there's a lot of, um, I just like f- I'm following the doubt stories. i back to Ireland, maybe? Ireland yeah. Ireland and immigrants to New York City in the 1800s. A yeah. Lot of like, fighting. Like, like the, Jack Sullivan like with the, the nice slacks yeah, on. Yeah, like, like the shirts. Notre Dame logo yeah, guy. Yeah, that, put him on. Put him on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put him on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least the cowardly lion. Yeah, <sighs> you, gotta, you gotta throw hands. But it's just put him on. Because I remember when the the first ones came out, like back. I, I used to be a wrestling. I used to watch wrestling a little bit. But when um when the UFC came out, I was like, all right, I'm, I, how can I watch wrestling anymore? You know. 
Did, but the wrestling, did you get a, uh, caught up in the dramas? Was that the key for it? Because I know a lot of, hey, we make fun of wrestling, but yeah. I know that the people that are into it, and regardless of age, even Those though they're adults, savages. They're, they know they're into it, and they get yeah. the posters and all that stuff. So is that the fun of it, or what's the deal with wrestling? I, I haven't watched wrestling in a time, but, I mean, back then it used to be, uh, uh, like, the personalities on that too, right? Everything was just big and loud, and people were acting crazy. Uh, Ultimate Warrior, you got uh, uh, Hulk Hogan and those cats and whatnot. So at the end of the and day, the like, like UFC or like anything else, it's good guys and bad guys. It's like, guys you like and guys you yeah. hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you're, exactly. And you, what you end up finding out, so there's this guy, John Jones. He's coming back, and he's actually switching over into heavyweight. He was he, possibly the greatest fighter of all time, right? Light heavyweight champion. He's been champion longer than he's been just a regular fighter. So he's fighting nothing but the best in the world his entire career. Youngest UFC champion of all time. He is arguably a scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> Who isn't, though? Who isn't? If you're a gladiator in modern times, right? But he has, like, you know, he's been popped for this, car accidents against, like, Jesus. pregnant ladies. He's, he gets busted for drinking and driving, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Everybody loves him because he wins. He ended up fighting this guy, Daniel Cormier. Best guy you could ever meet, right? right Did all right. his homework. Right, First right, person right. to raise his hand. I never had a drink. And blah, 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 blah. blah, blah. Pretty boy. The crowd nice is guy. like, boo! All right, so that, all right, so let's go to a philosophical question. Okay. It's about sports, business, politics, entertainment, whatever. Mm. Is winning the only currency in pop culture and entertainment and, and getting ahead in the United States? Any time that Michael Jordan, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, just a six foot six, hundred and what ninety when he started, but by by towards the end of his career, he was big. He was like if, twenty. If he was uh, on the C suite executive board of like Subway or something, and he punched his colleague, the comptroller yep. named Stephen Kerr, in the <laughs> face, <laughs> he'd go to jail. He'd get locked up. That's illegal. But if you're Michael Jordan, <laughs> name, face, brand of the NBA, you're winning championships, you've never even gone to a game seven, and you punch a dude because he missed a pass in practice, we, we look the other way. We, we understand. For the record, <laughs> we understand. Michael Jordan loves Steve Kerr. He, he loves his books are talking about right. how much he played with heart. And also, for the record, Steve Kerr, Turned yeah. out okay. He was a great player. Fair won enough. rings as a player. Won rings as an executive. I think he was a GM or a front office guy for, for the Spurs. As a second. And then for the coach. Steve yeah. Kerr's doing fine. He's doing absolutely fine. But to your point, right, I think winning in the grand scheme of things covers up a whole lot for it people. Sure does. It yeah. sure does. I was thinking about this. Even, like, we live in, um, I'm curious to get your take on this. We okay. live in a culture where with, uh, you know, I, and we, you and I work with social media. We have to. It's a part of the reality of doing what we do. Of You're course, very yeah, good yeah. at it. I've been looking at your Appreciate Mike you. Knight comedy feed Appreciate on Instagram. You guys should check out. What, give me the, give me the uh, at Mike Knight. At Mike Knight comedy on all the things. At Mike Knight comedy. You guys should really should check this out because he is a comedian, but he does some really cool stuff with film and, and moving the camera and stuff like that. I really liked it. But what I was going to say is this. You know, we do live in a, in a world of social media. Is that harmful, though, in a certain way? It gives everyone this megaphone and i'm thinking of guys like musk and of course trump and all sure, those sure. Guys. it gives bullies or people who like to bully uh this big platform to do sure so. you think about that at all yeah and well let me ask you this right because the normal the the it used to be the normal way it goes for like a star or somebody of merit somebody in the public eye is we watch the rise we want to see you fuck up have your scandal, fall, and then rise again, right? That's the story of America. So that explains the Elon Musk story sure. kind of perfectly. A little. Or even his dad, if you paid attention. I think his dad might be a bit of a... His dad's like, what, like a diamond... <laughs> like a uh, diamond mine uh, owner or something like that. And I think he just got uh, suggested like with a younger God. gal, God. younger than she definitely should have been. All Le right, then I'll throw out another theory. <laughs> All of life's problems can be boiled down to... 
wounded men who uh, suffered some sort of childish wound or had a tough time growing up. And when it's their time to grow up and sit in the driver's seat, they're going to wreak freaking havoc. Vladimir Putin, we're fighting a war because the guy was... Had it rough. I well, mean, do we even want the arc anymore? Do we even want to see you do the rise, fall, rise again? Because now I can just, I can live in your past because it's more entertaining. Like if I'm scrolling through my little feeds or whatever, ooh. the video I'm going to click on is uh, such and such and such and such is is losing everything. Such yeah, and such and such and such. The right. scandal of da 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 Click. Yeah. I don't, I don't care about like... I think uh, I think I'm seeing the PR campaign for Will Smith. I'm starting to see him pop up in my the 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 powers that be are starting to put him back in my the feed. Machine's back the machine work. is starting to get right behind they were him smart again, to right? Pull him off to the sidelines sure. for a year, coming if, up a year. Huh? If I see if I see positive movie review for Will Smith's last do 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 do, Will Smith gives out a thousand turkeys to starving people in Turkey. Smart. And then I see. Will Smith slapped uh, slapped a cup of coffee out of somebody's hand at Starbucks. Guess which one I'm clicking on? You're doing the <laughs> I'm Starbucks. Clicking, I'm clicking on the... Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm like, he's a professional slapper. I want to see... I want to see that coffee he, slap. Yeah, he absolutely. He slapped people's coffee yeah. out of their hand. Yeah, I mean... Like he's getting good at this. Who hasn't slapped a cup of coffee <laughs> in a couple of days? Absolutely. Uh, this uh, segment of uh, Chris and Mike at Night brought to you mm. by White Creek Water. It's water White from water. a creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the Old West. Like... Yeah, go down to the creek and get some water. White Creek water. Thanks, guys. Welcome aboard. Thanks for your sponsorship. Um, All right, while we're talking flicks and movies, Oscar nominations released. Guys, I'm getting a little bit older, and I'm not a big streamer, so Mm. I'm getting left behind on a lot of this stuff. And I even have Showtime, and it's on Showtime, but this everything, everywhere, all at once. Saw it in theaters. You did? Did. What's the word? Well, I'm a fan of Michelle Yeoh because she used to get down with uh, Jackie Chan back in the day. <laughs> didn't think I was gonna, didn't didn't think I knew that one, did you? Stop. Didn't think I was pulling that Stop. one out. When I ask you to give me your ratings on actors and actresses, it's the work they do on the screen. That All I'm right. Asking my, but if you're giving special kudos to who they're banging off the screen, I love it. I'm on board <laughs> with that because there are some people punching above. I think their she wings. was in the movie. Was she in Crouch? She was in Crouching Tiger. Hidden yeah. Crouch, which is. Heads and Tails, one of my favorite uh, 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 movies of all time. I love yeah, Crouching yeah. Tiger. Hidden Absolutely. Group. It's Absolutely. a great movie. Ang Lee it's went to the University of Illinois, Big Ten guy. Yeah. Um, and he. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. Chow Young Fat. It might have been, uh, been one of his tops. I would say so. And yeah. uh, and the the young girl who was I mean let's just be yeah. real she was hot I mean the yeah, hot of China's girl yeah yeah um, everything everywhere all the time anywhere uh, <laughs> anyway uh, fantastic movie it gives you everything that you need your little feel goods <laughs> and how does it do that it's got the big portal that goes to the other side that's gonna end the world of but it's really the story man the story in there is like. The family story, like, what are you giving up to get... I'll tell you exactly what caught me in the beginning that really drew me into the story, and I'm like, I can get down with this story. Is in the beginning, they have uh, Michelle Yeoh's character talking to her husband, I believe, right? And there are just a couple of Chinese okay. folks in there. Uh, <laughs> short round. The guy that plays short round, apparently. <laughs> and did he, did he call Michelle Yo, Dr. Jones? <laughs> Dr. Jones, lady. But they're just talking. Oh, they're just talking like in their kitchen. Yeah. And they're jumping between Chinese, you know, Mandarin or, or whatever they're speaking and English. Okay. And I've been around enough like Hispanic household people or this and that third people that if you've been in the country for a while, or, you know, yeah, you like, were, I know, yeah. you're, you're like, you're jumping in and out. Like you're, you're doing, you know, they call it Spanglish or whatever like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's, it was just believable because okay. it wasn't okay. like, it was like, oh, that that's probably seriously like, because how long have, have I mean, uh, there's a, a, a large Chinese like, uh, culture based in San Francisco, right? Of course. And they're pretty am- Americanized out there. Of course. So I would imagine the that they just sit there and jump back between, you know, their language and and it's like a new hybrid. Like the Mexicans in Los so Angeles. Watching it, I'm like, oh, this sounds like, this makes me believe in it. Like I was okay, able to just it. jump into the world. But then the other story was like, 
mother's love and what are you willing to do for family? What's important? All the other good stuff. Okay. So I, I like enjoyed it. And the wiener fingers. There was some weird stuff with wiener fingers. I'm not going to ruin it for you. You got to see it. All right. Is it, uh, is it as uh, cool as that Korean movie that won before the uh, pandemic, that one with the uh, Korean family living in the... Do uh, you remember that one where they were living in the rich family, but the Korean family was really poor, and uh, mm. they moved into the... Parasite, thank you, Scotty. I haven't seen that one. No, oh, you got to see it. That's okay. Same. It's an interesting concept. Okay. All right, cool. Um, the... Uh, Banshees of Inner Sharon, this is interesting. Okay. Uh, has Colin Farrell and the other guy in it and the same director, but they were in that movie a couple years ago or 20 years ago mm -hmm. called In Bruges, which is really funny. I've been wanting to see that. You need to That's see That's Colin it. Farrell where he's like a hitman yep. or something yep. like that? Yeah, they're hitman. Okay, yeah, yeah. Same kind of concept, but the same him and uh, this mm. the other guy, uh, Brendan Gleeson, play two friends again, mm. and it's the same director. So apparently that's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, but the rest is I. Have... Are any of the Marvel movies, um, like nominated for anything? No. Which Sorry. is surprising because that's got to be what sixty percent of the movies being made these days. All right, shift to that conversation. You went there, so we have Let's to go. A couple years ago, Martin Scorsese went on a rant and said that the proliferation of comic book movies and the Marvel movies okay. are destroying <laughs> the movie business. Okay. Now. For the record, he's kind of right. Like, that Fair has enough. just grown to be such a huge part of the business. And I understand the business model. Mm -hmm. They make a lot of money, recurring characters, kind of this one universe and all that. Okay. But at the same time, if you really like movies, uh, you, f you find your movies. It's like food. Sometimes yeah. you want pizza. Sometimes you do want the really nice steak or a sure. nice risotto. Sometimes you just want something really, really good. Sometimes you just want a burger. Sometimes you want whatever. That's, for me, I love movies, but I love all kinds of movies. Yeah, I'm in the mood for a good comedy, but sometimes a good Marvel movie does the trick or yeah. whatever. Where are you on I'm going to tell you why I think Martin Scorsese is full of doo-doo. Uh oh. On this particular point. I got the Mike Dane here. Just talk to me. He disrespected him a little bit. He's uh, telling me I'm full of doo doo. A little bit. Uh, but I directed the bit. Robert De Niro. Hey, Joe Pesci. He disrespected him a little but, bit. But uh, I'm full of doo doo. So Scorsese is a genre guy. Sure. Did you say that? Uh, yes, but he has branched out. But I He has point, branched yes, out. Yes, but yes, when yes. you think Scorsese, yes, you yes. think By gangster. Sure, sure, sure. And so, for him to point the finger at another genre film franchise, when he's pumping them out, Mean Streets, Goodfellas, Taxi Driver, uh, which Taxi Driver wasn't necessarily uh, a gangster no, it's film, New but York it's, and it's, it's a gangster time, right? Uh, Irishman, all that. Uh, was he, was he um, uh, uh, the boxing movie? Yeah, Raging Bull. Raging Bull, yeah. right? So, and not even... Ray. <laughs> Ray. You didn't knock me down. I didn't go down, right? <laughs> I didn't go down. For him to point his finger, he, he sounds he sounds like the, the, the guys that were Understood. complaining about escalators because Understood. Understood. He but does he have a point though? Is is, is mm. there is it getting harder to make a, a Martin Scorsese movie this day? Or is it easier? Can you make the argument that because mm. of streaming and Netflix and everyone else, there's plenty of ways to get a sure. movie financed if you really had an idea? I think form follows function, right? So is there a way to make a gangster flick now that will speak to the, the people that are going to go out and spend their, their money on tickets and whatnot? Hell yeah. Of Netflix. course there is. Of course there is. Netflix put up money. I... Plus studios. Plus this. Plus, I mean, yeah. most movies, when you look at the credits and they open yeah. up, they've been financed, not by yeah. one piece, but four or five different groups have gone yeah. in on the financing to put something together. So yeah, you pull the Irishman up and it's Netflix, but... Blah blah blah. Warner's or so so yeah. he put Mooney up. Blah, blah. You know they, they split the financing. But I mean, would Scorsese even want to be the guy that? I don't ever want him to stop being what he already is. And oh, he might even not. be too long in the tooth to even think about doing something weird. I he's, want yeah. my Scorsese exactly the way. He's not going to switch to keep, romantic no, comedies. No, of course not. Yeah. He's not going to make a movie with uh, Matthew McConaughey. And with that being said, though. De Niro, he switched it up. So he's doing uh, Mean Grandpa or he's doing Meet the Fockers or, or whatever it is to try and be contemporary. Funny. 
He can be funny. He definitely can he be can funny. Be... He's got the time. And I, mean, I went back on. and watched uh, uh, Silver Linings Playbook, where he played uh, mm. Bradley Cooper's dad. Just mm. really good in it. Um, yeah, he's, he's great. I Hats off to any artist that can evolve yeah. as they get older and not be a one-trick pony. Uh, Bill Murray's the same way. Robert De Niro. These guys have changed their yeah. game up as they've gotten older. Hats off to them. They stayed yeah. in the game. I mean, these guys are not young. These guys are in their 70s. Yeah. I just feel like, I mean, if if Tom Brady started pointing his finger at, like, Brett Favre and going, or, or you know, like uh, like Aaron Rodgers and be like, that's not the way you quarterback. Like, you already won, bro. Like, you already got your rings. Why are you pointing at somebody that, that had to squeeze one out and is struggling to make it to the playoffs? It's true. Leave him alone. Like... I think what he, what he, Marvel's not exactly squeezing out and trying to make it. They are the business now. Sure. But I think what, what Martin Scorsese is referring to, he didn't articulate it well. Yeah. But you're not going to go to the movies to see a Scorsese movie anymore. Probably not. To get that thing, to watch that thing, you're yeah. probably going to have to have Netflix or watch it at home or watch it on your laptop. Yeah. So the days of really going to a theater, what gets you to go to a theater? I mean, you said you saw that movie in the theater. That's unheard of. I think the last time I went to a yeah. movie a movie theater, all due respect to Scott, we saw the hideous song. Oh, yeah. Godzilla movie. <laughs> like, oh, jeez. No, yeah. Scott, put a gun. <laughs> like, going, going. Oh, geez. King of the Monsters. Horrendous. It's horrendous. Yeah, he put a gun to my head and made me go with him. No, well, going, going to the movies now is an event. It's like going yeah. to a restaurant. Nine bucks, right? Yeah. You don't say, I... I like, you say, hey, I'm going to the restaurant. What do you feel like? I don't know. Let's just get out the house and go eat something. And you might pick it on the way. That's, like, what the movies are now. Like, I don't know if anything is, is like, calling my name out like just that, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, with a Scorsese, that's like a, a whiskey, you know? And, you know, like, those it's... Marvel movies are like, a, I don't know, like a Four loco. <laughs> like they're just in the back of the fridge right. somewhere. Let's talk about what the essence of a of a movie watching experience is. Before now, it's mm. more solo. You're not. It's not a group community experience. You're sure. kind of binging it by yourself. Yeah. By and large, you know, most people are sitting at home watching that by themselves. Mm. But when movies first came to the scene, uh, when movies first came to the scene, it was also a singular watching experience. Yeah. You stuck your head in the little xylophone thing and you sure, watch yeah. the movie by yourself so that was when they first started and then there was movie theaters with a crowd uh and then um back to watching it by yourselves again yeah i don't know there's just certain things in society like i said we talk about social media these things that they seem like they would they would connect people which they do to yeah. a certain extent but they also split people apart well the watering hole is kind of finished now it's not everybody talking about that one movie that came out all at work and everything now yeah everybody, that's now everybody's right. suggesting Hey, have you seen this thing out of, out of 12 million choices that I watched? And I'm like, I would never watch yeah, that. Um, yeah. and, like, and you're right. And the audiences are slice and dice so thin. Oh, so thin. And I'm not, gonna ca I'm not going to get yeah. to all of them. There's not enough yeah, time yeah. in the freaking universe no, to not even. get to that movie. It bums but, me out when somebody tries to show me what's yeah. on their feed. Yeah. Like, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> how did that get curry? You know, 80 for Brady? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, Lily Tomlin, still at it. But there are still certain things that capture the masses' attention, right? Like, uh, I hope so. I would yeah. like to think that there are still stories that are out there where everyone can get together and laugh. My greatest memories mm. of of uh, of movies were were like I went to the, this used to be this I think long before you moved here there was this thing called Three Penny on Lincoln. Okay. Remember the Three Penny on Lincoln, uh, Scotty? And I saw swingers there, mm. and. Uh, could not stop yeah, laughing. There too. That's where everybody was going. It was crazy. Like yeah. it was this movie theater was going to explode. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Uh, I saw Austin Powers at uh, that theater way up on mm. Broadway, uh, and I couldn't stop laughing. Uh, and I saw Fargo up there too. I saw Heat at the Esquire Theater on Oak Street. Yeah. Uh, I just remember these powerful cinema experiences. I hope we don't lose that, but like I said, fragmenting in the audience and all that stuff, it makes me sad a little bit. Yeah, which means what, whatever rises to the top is gonna be that much more pure, right? I hope so. A lot of people went and saw, a lot of people supported Maverick. It's a, it's a, it's a random action, pseudo 80s jet fighter, 
thing. And most everybody saw it. You're right. No, you know what? You're right about that. Everyone saw it. Everyone loved it. You didn't need your brain at all for that movie. Whatsoever. No, you know, you didn't, and everyone enjoyed it. And Except everyone and it's, and it's planes, all the no, shooting, it's, blow up. I know, I know. Yeah. I know. But it was legit. Why do people like it? There's a thing, right? There's a, there's a thing that makes jokes funny. There's a thing that makes music listenable. There's a thing that makes movies magic. And there's no way to describe what it is. It's kind of like it's, it's kind of like our interaction, like our chemistry. It's hot. You you, it's you hot. can't you can't yeah. just yeah yeah yeah. It's just sprinkled. It's, it's just hot. hot. It's what it is. Yeah. It's hot. All right. On that note, and that is a positive note. Uh, we are gonna say goodbye. Say thank you again to to White Creek, White uh, Creek. Chris and Mike at night movie edition. Uh, we, there's a lot we still haven't gotten to. In fact, Mike found some uh, documents in his basement. He's got a return of the National Archives. <laughs> All of them classified. And I found some, too. They were, like, <laughs> stuff that if we knew about them at the time, we would have saved a lot of lives. So, my bad. <laughs> Guys, please come and get these documents. Uh, anyways, dude, you're on fire, as always. Um, Likewise, Chris. And thank you for your uh, insight on films, pop culture, entertainment, UFC. This is going to be a thing, him and I talking this stuff out. Um... Because we get along really well. Thanks for letting me sit shotgun. Man. Yeah, man. Next time you drive. My <laughs> wingman <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> He's Val Kilmer. I'm Tom Cruise. Oh, see? Yeehaw, Jester's dead. <laughs> uh, Christian Mike at night. Christian Mike at night. Thanks, guys. Adios.